Aside from all of the preserving that we've been doing, we also have been really busy out in the garden over the last couple of months just prepping for fall and for winter. I wanted to make sure we got a lot of fall crops in the ground, a lot of leafy greens because in the winter we really crave some fresh things because we have some things that are preserved but it's really nice to have some variation in our diet and because it gets cold here it's also really important that we properly prepare for when frost and cold weather comes we are expecting a frost in just a couple of days so we're doing a lot of picking today we're doing all of the peppers all the tomatoes all the dried beans i'm going to cover my green beans in hopes of saving them because they're really really close to being mature and the other thing that we harvested today is basil one of those looks like it still has some good peppers on it got a couple that the kids didn't see so i'm gonna bring those in i want to freeze dry some freeze dry okay cool like whole sliced in half or no we'll, so we'll do the same thing and we'll skin them oh okay and then we'll Freeze dry them like diced. Okay, cool. So you can just add it to yeah. soup or chili or okay, whatever cool. takes tomatoes. Yeah. Ah, I got a bumblebee on me. Ah! 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 <laughs> Don't get that. <laughs> I did get that. Oh boy. Okay. Um, these are all the bad um, tomatoes. They're going to the pigs. They're going to have a good dinner tonight. Oh, did Ian pick those? Yeah. Bye. Just finished cutting the rest of the basil. I got a bunch of purple and green. Um, the kitchen needs Cam is gonna help me in a little bit to make some hoops. They're called quick hoops. I explained it a little bit in my book video. I had read it in Elliot Coleman's book. And so I really wanted to try this method of using electrical conduit. I'll also use my regular PVC hoops that I have too. Uh, but it spans two rows, which is kind of cool because less hoops for the space. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. This pipe bender from Johnny's is really nice and handy to use. We have half inch conduit from a hardware store. Nothing special about it. And putting it in, just bend it. That's really all there is to it. And I'm leaving, I'm leaving a foot on each end. Unbent just cause that's gonna help it fit on our rows a little better so you see so you, can, you can start there but I'm starting here just to make it fit better we kind of dry dry fitted one of these earlier this is how we do it um, yeah. it's, it's not as heavy as I thought but it's still heavy If you're gonna scooch in one way, have it be over the beans. Okay. Yeah, oh, get out of my way, rock. So, one mess up. Yeah, we're not perfect. Um, we have these clips that we got. That if any of you have high tunnels, you these are familiar. Uh, we forgot to put these on before we put all the conduit in. So we're having to go back and put, we're putting both in on one, it's just so we have to take out one side and we're just gonna kind of loop one of these over. And we'll see why those are important in a few seconds. We're gonna put the row cover on and then the tarp on. I'm putting two on because of the green beans 
and because it's gonna be a really hard frost. So you just tie it, you just tie it like that. Double half hitch. Okay. Okay. So this is why they have the hooks kind of separate. So you, cause you just feed it through sideways and then twist it, twist it onto the hook. That way you don't have to thread it all the way through. Does that make sense? Now why don't you come over here and show me? Okay. I want to drop it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's just do, let's just, let's just do it like this. Take that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's better. I like that idea better. We were able to get everything covered that we wanted to last night. I wanted to give myself a little bit of a buffer because usually I'm covering all my plants so last minute. The night before it's gonna freeze and then it doesn't have time to build up heat inside these covers during the day before it freezes. So. I'm really proud of myself this year. I got them on earlier. It has not frosted yet. It got really close last night, but tonight it's gonna to be 27 degrees and then tomorrow night it's supposed to be 23 degrees. Here's what Cam and I were working on last night. You take a string and tie it on one end, come down to that piece here, and then over to that one, over to here, and then you go all the way down the line and then you come up back again on the other side and then let me show you how these work. It is this plate, this metal plate, and the electrical conduit goes right into this hole. And then here you have another clip where you can clip in your rope. Okay, I'm gonna show you underneath this. We've got our greens here. And then there's the green beans I'm trying to save. It's really warm in here right now and it's only 54 degrees today. We finished harvesting all of the warm season crops that would be damaged by frost. And I wanna show you what we got inside. So first of all, we have a bunch of Genovese basil, and then we have this amethyst improved basil, and we're gonna be freeze drying pretty much all of that. We might do a little bit of pesto. And then here we have black beans. This one's called Cherokee Trail of Tears. And these did really, really well this year. We got a lot of black beans. This is just the remaining little bit. And then down here we have cow peas. These are all gonna be saved for seed because I already harvested a bunch of these for soup. And then kind of throughout all of this, I have a lot of tomatoes here. I harvested both green and red because the green ones will ripen into red ones. And you can also make some things out of green tomatoes too. And then down here we have jalapenos. This is a lemon jalapeno. And then these ones are just picked before they had turned yellow. And I also have, I believe this is a tam jalapeno. And then the last thing here is the peppers. These are just a sweet bell pepper. I've been saving seed for these for a several years and they're a little bit smaller right now. This always happens in the fall for me. They just don't get as big before they ripen. So they're just smaller in size. Got a random carrot in here too. Oh yeah, and some popcorn. I'm gonna use that carrot for dinner tonight. <laughs> okay. Back in short sleeves again today. No more frost for right now. It's back up warm, like 70 degrees. So I wanted to give a report on how everything did with the frost, take you around the garden so you can kind of see what survived, what didn't, and some of the things that really surprised me. I have cabbages under this lighter cover, and then I have the green beans and some Asian greens under the heavier cover. 
I was hoping so much that my green beans would make it. They made it through the first night of frost, no problem. It got down to like 25, 26, no issues. Just a little bit of frost damage on the edges. And then the next night it got down to 15 degrees Fahrenheit and that was the killer. Pretty much all of our cool weather crops made it through the frost with no problem. We had some leafy greens, some arugula, and those look just fine. And then this is rutabaga that made it through. And then we had some carrots and beets, and those were fine. All of these I covered. We also had some Chinese cabbage. One that surprised me was the kale. I left that uncovered thinking it would be fine, but it did get some pretty bad frost damage. You saw how damaged my kale was? This just goes to show what a difference it makes to have frost tolerant varieties. So if you look right here, I'll flip this around. This right here is a variety of lettuce called winter density. There is almost no frost damage and it's in the exact same row as my kale. You can see some of the kale right there. So it just goes to show what a difference the variety makes. Normally lettuce would not make it through a frost very easily and this one had no problem. Everything inside of my caterpillar tunnel looked really good, no damage at all. I actually have a bunch of leafy greens in here, all of the fall crops, but I did have some volunteer tomatoes pop up and those were still alive when I checked on this day. I came out to check on my broccoli today and it's ready and I'm really excited about it because this is by far the best broccoli I've ever grown. Delicious. <laughs> we did run into some problems with the voles coming and eating it, which is crazy. I didn't know that they liked to eat broccoli. I thought they would just eat root crops, but apparently they like broccoli as well. Kind of makes sense because the broccoli is especially tasty. So I can understand why they would want to eat it, but we set some traps, took care of the problem. It's all good now. Broccoli looks really good, so we're just going to go ahead and harvest. Yachty. So before I wrap up the video, I wanted to give you a current look of what everything looks like in the garden. For the most part, everything outside of my tunnel we have harvested or it's died in frost and everything in here is still in really good shape. So first of all, down in here we have celery. So these are turnips down here. And then in the middle I planted carrots, which are not seeing much light because they're getting overgrown by these radishes and turnips. And over here I have daikon radish. That coming out right there. Those I use for our main kimchi and any Asian dishes that we make. And then on this side, we have a lot of spinach that looks really good. It's gigantic. Look at the size of that <laughs> compared to the size of my hand. It's huge. This is called giant winter spinach, so it's giant for a reason. Living up to its name. Living up to its name, for sure. So we'll be harvesting this all winter and just cutting the individual leaves and then you let the middle regrow. And once it starts to go to seed, I'll just take that out. This is a winter brown lettuce. And this other one is North Pole lettuce, which is a specific variety, obviously, that does well in the cold. And then down on this end, we have, this is called Yellow Heart Winter Choi. This is also very frost tolerant. Again, more of this North Pole lettuce. And then the winter brown here. Wow, this looks like very, very ready. I probably need to plant some more of that. Anyway, so nothing is really growing usually at this point because we're, I think we are at the point where we have less than 10 hours of daylight a day, which means nothing really grows. So until February and then things start to speed up again. So outside of the tunnel, what we were working on earlier this morning is we put down a bunch of compost because I need to plant garlic here. I'm way behind on planting my garlic. <laughs> garlic should be planted by the first week of November and it is the last week of November so I'm hoping to be able to get that planted by either tomorrow or early next week whenever the weather is more favorable for that 
But we got it all prepped now at least, which is really good. Hard part's over, and then we just do the rest. I did, uh, you'll notice I did take the soil from the aisles and put it back on top of some of the beds because of the drainage issues we had this year. I'm going through my garden and doing a lot of that to fix that problem. Everything in here looks really good. We still have the Asian greens. We still have some cabbages in here and we also have uh, collards is what I planted after uh, I started to take out some of those damaged green beans there in here as well. Okay, how many do we have left? Yeah. I have 